one of the most difficult problems you could say facing mathematics today, in fact the most difficult problem, is called the Riemann hypothesis. I would say it's not so difficult to solve once we've actually understood the structure of numbers and what's going on. But let's say we uh, just draw a line here. And what we could say is that though that represents the numbers, yeah, there's a zero line there going up this way, down that way, down that way. And that's the I line, the imaginary number line. So that's where mathematics is. You can find out more about that. So you could say that there's a number here. Let's say that's the number one. And then you've got the infinite set of numbers above that. And you could say the same here and here. And the interesting thing about the number I is it creates this unit circle around here, yeah, like this. E to the i to the pi and all these amazing mathematics that comes out of this. But really, actually, it's just a rotational function of, of the dot. Yeah, it rotates and it rotates around and around. Whereas what we were doing before with zero squared, we were rotating the actual number line itself. You know, this has been set up on a 90 degree axis, yeah, and with the i line going that way, and the normal numbers, if you like, the regular numbers that we all know, uh, going across that way with the zero point in the middle. And what seems to happen is there's this thing here, 0.5, yeah, which creates something called the critical strip. And what it says is, is that, you know, when you do this, when you do this kind of mathematical equation with the Riemann hypothesis, um, you get certain zeros that end up on this line over here, they're called the trivial zeros, and then you get certain zeros that end up on this line here, and they're called the non-trivial zeros, yeah? And so the question with the Riemann hypothesis is, why, why, why do, do all of the zeros end up on this line here? Do they all end up there, or is there something else going on? It's a very important question, because it's got a lot to do with primes, so won't go too much into that. This here then becomes something called the critical strip, yeah? And so the question is, if, all of, if that is true, then it means quite a lot for mathematics. So the question is, is it true? Well, what we should do is we should really start by imagining what's really happening with these numbers here. You take this number and you swap it over here, and you take this number and you swap it over there. It's like a plat. And so you're, you're kind of wrapping, if you like, in space, you could see it wrapping this number set around. And as you do, it braids this, and all of the numbers from up here start to shrink to a dot from here at one. And as they do, they kind of wrap around from here, the infinite set wraps around, and it all collapses here. As it passes this one, because this is an infinite set, this becomes, if you imagine, one. But because there's double density infinity here of this numbers that we, sh we showed with Aleph 0.5, what starts to happen is, is it starts to converge at a point here. It doesn't go all the way out to here because of this double density, it compresses. So you can compress all of that number space into this space here, this space here between here and here. And that means when you follow the lines through, this becomes the, the, zero, the zero line, this pushes the zero line up. And that's why all of the Riemann hypothesis is correct. All of the zeros will appear on there. Now to get a little bit more into that, there is a geometry that you can draw, which is all about, about here to here, this triangle here. And what happens is here is that this becomes something called the golden ratio. It's half a square, that's 0.5, isn't it, yeah? That's one, and we mentioned the square root of 1.25 before, yeah? And that's going on that line there, that's the distance of it. And then you've got another one, which is the square root of two, which would be up there, yeah? Which would be like this. And you can see what happens in a sense, as you start to switch these over, you're compressing these number lines, and as these numbers compress into this part, this, because of double density infinity, everything moves up on the critical strip, and what you end up with is all the zeros there, and it's run through this particular function. This forms the golden ratio, this forms the silver ratio, and then we can map the silver ratio on, and golden ratio onto that, and we can see how these numbers compress. And that solves the Riemann hypothesis, really, because it says, you know, all you have to say is, it, why is it that, you know, all of these zeros are happening? And what we're saying is, it's a geometric function of the number plane itself. Because of the, the density of infinity, what happens is as you start to compress that number, that whole set of infinite numbers, so it starts to sort of uh, come into this space here, and it's in, it's in double density, and so the zero line moves up, and that's the solution. We actually show a lot more on our website where we talk about the, the depth of the mathematics and everything like that in our solution, and so you can go and check that out and have a bit more of a read. But that's just a sort of overview to let you to see how this geometric function of number space and how you know, when we start to sort of look at it as a number plane, you know, we can start to sort of see a new type of mathematic emerging and we call that geometric math and fourth dimensional mathematics. So once again, thank you for listening and as ever, do subscribe in the link below if you wish to know more and follow us along this journey as we solve infinity. Plenty more videos in the pipeline and uh, stay tuned for more updates.